What's happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, you in that thing looking like Bootsy, boy. That <laughs> boy's a Bootsy. No, oh, you like you straight from N O, man. What's going on with you, man? Wow. What's the album? Hey, man. What's good with people, man? Good hitting the show. We in full effect. Uh, hey, Eclipse 2017, man. Did you go and look at the Eclipse today? Very disappointed. You were disappointed. You thought it was gonna get dark. Then. Yeah, man. <laughs> Man, I waited 30, 30 years to see that. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. I thought we were gonna get a little bit darker than what it did. Yeah. It's amazing that I, where we were at was like Atlanta was like 96, 97%. Uh, got, you know, but you had to be in that, that black zone, that totality to really go all the way dark. Man, the Eclipse looked like Sam 32. <laughs> it did feel like it was getting ready to get dark for a little bit. Yeah, like a tornado was coming. That right. would remind me of yeah. tornadoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But. I looked, I had my glasses, man. I had made, I had to make me a little box at first now, bro. I don't know if y'all checked out my Instagram stories. Y'all gonna check it out right now. It's gonna be there by the time y'all watch this. I y'all been watching live. Though. I seen something you posted. Yeah. And we was on the same page. What's that? It didn't hit me till the day though. I yeah. was like, man, I should have bought about a hundred fifty of them things. What? That country came out but just then. Yeah. But yeah, 150. Man, I was like, bro, I'm slipping. Man. Cause I'm talking about, I went to like, Probably like three or four different places. Nobody had them. And then it, it didn't hit me real talk, honestly, honestly, like for real, for real. It didn't hit me until I was on the like the black side of town and mm. the black side of town didn't have them. That's when I was like, oh no, they selling these things everywhere. Cause yeah. I was expecting like, you know, the, the Walmart on Howell Mill, all right, I'm expecting for y'all to be sold out. Right. But when I'm on like, I'm on Metropolitan. Right. Kroger don't have them. Like, I'm like, hold on. Man, n- nigga, nigga want to see the moon too, man. <laughs> yeah, we messed up though. I could have bought like, we like did. for real. That, that right there, that's a situation where you can easily could have bought like fifty. Cause I think it was like <laughs> two or three dollars. You know what I mean? Dude, Fino said what Eclipse? <laughs> <laughs> you missed it, bro. It, it happened. It, it's gone now. You gotta uh, have you a jet to catch up with it right now at this point. Man. But I saw a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was cool. It's all good. It was cool. Shout out to my neighbors, man. Like I had made my own. I walked outside trying to look at it with my situation. Yeah, it wasn't really working out. My neighbor was like, "Man, you, you trying to look at the eclipse?" Like, yeah. Yeah. He was like, "That box ain't gonna help you, man." <laughs> <laughs> Tell him it did seventy. Uh, back in seventy six, it did. Yeah, it was just like where the um, I think where the sun was at. Yeah, it really had to be behind you to really for it to work the right way. So oh, okay. I ended up, you know, he was like he had an extra pair, so let yeah. me see him. So that was that was cool, man. That my dog say, my dog say he stayed outside from one forty five to three thirty. Didn't see nothing. God, it? he said he ain't see nothing. Mm, mm-hmm, mm. Man, but hopefully, hopefully it'll come back around. Hold your head, man. Yeah, yeah man. Right. <laughs> Hold your head. It was cool though. I like, I procrastinated though. I should have, I should have, you know, stepped my game up on it. Cause it's like, all good, you know. You weren't thinking fast I knew enough. Some, I knew some people, man. They were like going out of town and everything to see it, man. Yeah, we should have hit that. We should have hit that Blue Ridge or something. Something like that up there. Yeah, we should have hit that. Nice. We could have broadcast live from Blue oh. Ridge, man. That would have. We cut uh, the check. We thinking, man. <laughs> could have been up, man. Hey, I next was, time. Yeah, man. We'll, we'll, we'll catch you next time. Next time. But it's all good, man. What's popping, man? Oh man, I, I was trying not to talk about it, but I think we don't have a choice but to talk about it. So many shows, man, that I watched this weekend. And rest in peace, Dick Gregory. Rest in peace, Dick Gregory. That's definitely the best place to start. Yeah. Now, okay, let me ask you this: Are you one of the ones that actually knew about Dick Gregory? Later. Later. Okay. As in real later, as in two years ago. Okay. I appreciate your honesty. Uh, and that's really because of the Breakfast Club. Mm. So now I knew of him. Right, right. Now I, I knew I knew of him as well, man. Like I, um, I've heard the comedy. I didn't really know about the the uh, social activism mm. and like civil rights. I didn't know that part about. I just knew he always was like when when the old school comedians like the Richard Price and stuff like that. When they, whenever they would talk, they would always mention Dick Gregory. Mm. You know what I mean? Kind of like now how the the OGs like the Chris Ross and stuff. They always mention like Pryor and, and right. Probably Eddie, you know Eddie Murphy or whatever like that. So, I I just remember that and right. I heard some of his stuff. But you know, I mean, we were we were too young to really 
you know know the comedy like that but no doubt rest in peace dick gregory man um rest in peace jerry lewis jerry, jerry lewis died. that's yeah. another one yeah he died too man that's hey man life is precious appreciate life yep For real yep that conversation we was having off camera hey that was like last, last week we was outside talking about how like life yes like oh yeah, 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 talking about old buddy, yeah like he dead and gone and it's like yeah i'm talking about like over over with it's you know crazy I mean? so it's crazy yeah man um all right man you you want to talk about it what we talking about you seen power oh man come on man you in tears hey man i didn't want to see her go out like that man that little boy mm. You want to slap him, don't you? Hey, that little boy, need to, he need to, it's but, time to go. But you know, he probably going to be here for forever now. Uh, yeah, yeah, but man, come on, man. Everything. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. Hey, I'm tripping. I was hearing it, too. Yeah. Um, I'm tripping because, well, see, that was the sentence that I was talking about this, so I kind of confused my sentences. Mm-hmm. But it'll be funny if next season, Maybe maybe she in critical condition. We don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm just I'm just hopeful right that now. Wasn't the, that wasn't the season finale, was it? No, no. Oh. I mean next ne- episode. Next episode. Yeah. No, buddy. Oh man. I don't think so. Not the way they were crying in that last episode. No, you know, I mean, the, um, you know how they show the previews and everything for the next one, bro. Mm. Oh, okay. I ain't see that. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Damn. That was a spoiler for anybody. That one right there hurt, man. That oh, one hurt. Oh, it hurt. But on one hand, I finally saw something that wasn't as predictable in power. I ain't see her dying. Mm. And I ain't think Tariq was gonna die either. Right. But I thought like it was gonna be so, a, another situation. Yeah, you didn't think Tariq was gonna die, but the fact that you didn't think that, it just it just shows that you definitely didn't have, you ain't have oh, her on the mind no, at all. No, on my radar. You know what I'm saying? You went on my radar so, yeah, at that's all. very unpredictable. Yeah, that was unpredictable. Like, I didn't even, I didn't see that happening. I thought that was like on some like, oh, they, they pulled that one out of left field. That was kind of like, I felt like they, they knew they had to do something hmm. to kind of keep people. Also, man, Dre, I'm, I'm got tired of Dre too. Oh, Dre, yeah, Dre, man. Dre he, 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 that's another one, man. Them two. He too, too sneaky for no reason, though. It's uncalled for being sneaky. Tasha up the song. Tasha up. Tasha trying to get out. T- t- no. You don't think she's trying to get out? I don't know. I, I, I think the writing too good. At this point, the writing too good. So you think they just leading us on to think that she's trying to get she, out? She, she got some. She working, she working on, something, on something, man. That's just my that's my take. We'll, we'll see. We'll yeah, see. man. But good show, man. Good show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I finished Ozark. Oh, I did too, buddy. So <laughs> I'm about to hit Lake Altoona. Just because mm. that's where it was filmed, that I'm I'm trying to go see that. That made me want to go to that lake. If y'all ain't watching Ozark, trust me, you need to. Yeah, man, that's a good show. That's a great show. Now that now that what happened at the end, I ain't see that happening either though. Like when old, when uh old girl took the shotgun to him. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But is it me or the whole time yeah. I thought he was the top dog? Who? The guy. Um, oh no! I mean, no. You ain't gonna. You ain't gonna never see the top. You ain't gonna never see the top. Yeah, yeah. He ain't gonna never. When see he was the top. like, you got to go and make a call. Then I, it hit me. Then I was like, oh, he. He he he, he, he up just, under. Yeah, he up under somebody. Yeah, yeah. man. But uh, she went out of oh she was man, like, I'm talking about. Well, that right there remind me of some so no South Georgia boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this, this shit found equipment. <laughs> <laughs> but she took your top off, boy. For real. And unapologetically. Unapologetic. Like, like didn't care. All right. Yeah. Dang, boy. You know, we just closed this deal. Let's move on. We boy. got something else to do. Now, that next season going to be crazy, oh, yeah. man. Yeah, definitely. And, and I and I kind of felt the family was going was gonna to get back. I didn't think they were going to dip out. I no, they, 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 no, nah, hell no. Nah. Yeah, they couldn't, they, they, they couldn't go no. They can't hide from them people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh, next season going to be crazy. Shout out my dog, Ricky, man. His wife, mm. his wife is in episode four. She got just a little, just a little camera time. It ain't mm. much. She just standing around when they was in Mexico or something. Okay. Yeah, man. I thought that was pretty dope. That is dope. Yeah, man. But, uh. What else happened this week, man? I feel like, um, uh. 
It was something we were supposed to talk about. Well, you you want to go to topics or or we we talking about some news right now? What? What, what we I doing? felt like that topic that you said we need to get on. We we can wait till our guests get on to talk about it. I mean, okay. this might be the perfect time to bring them on. You think? You think so? It's whatever. Hey man, look. So we got we got the homie. This is he a second offender, man. Word. Second offender on the show. Um. So that's always a good thing when people want to come back, man. That make us feel special. So the homie Ill Deuce is definitely in the building. Word. Let me let me go ahead and see if we can pull the mic up, man. Yeah, man. I feel like this conversation we about to get in. He need to be a part of it too. Oh yeah, man. There you go, man. There you I, go. I come bearing gifts. Oh man, hold <laughs> up, man. Come bearing <laughs> gifts, man. Hold come on. Bearing gifts. Hold on. Bearing gifts. What? Bearing what? gifts. That oh, make us feel special. Yeah. Huh? Making us feel special, man. How you doing, man? I'm great, man. I'm great. I'm Welcome great. Welcome back, man. Welcome back to the show. Appreciate it, man. We might be tired. We tired in. Tangled in. Look, man, in light of, you know, the second time around. Oh, man. And it's the oh, good Hennessy man. show, oh, you man. know what I'm saying? I want to make sure y'all got a little bottle of oh, Hennessy. Oh, man. Y'all, y'all hey, keep man. right here, man. <laughs> this brother right here, man. W- won't, won't he do it? <laughs> <laughs> won't he do it? Well, you all right, bro? Already, you man. Already. Right, already. Man. Hey, I got to salute y'all for still being here. I oh, think, man. Oh, yeah. I think I came here, what, 2015? Ooh, mm. I think it was the end of 2015 or maybe the beginning of 2016. Oh, man. One of them. You know what I'm saying? And y'all still here. Y'all still, still holding it down. Still oh, yeah. It you know what I'm saying? Growth. Yeah. You feel Absolutely. me? Absolutely. So Absolutely. I, you know, salute to y'all for having me again. I'm excited to be here. I Definitely tell you what, man. man. All that. I see what you, I'm mean, going to go ahead and kick that convo off. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to get a cup. <laughs> <laughs> cup, cup. <laughs> Might so, as well. Huh? So, um, all right. So what we were talking about, man. Um, yeah, I heard the conversation from over there. Okay. You know, so I got to jump in. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> talk, talk to me. Man. I'm a power fan. You're a power fan. Okay. Straight up. Okay. okay. Um, As far as the kill goes, definitely didn't see that one coming. At all. You know, but I do feel like um, that's a character that we didn't necessarily fall in love with. Mm-hmm. Jimmy, I forgot I already had stuff over here, man. Yeah, that's a, that's a character that we didn't necessarily fall in love with because, you know, her, her character not written that much into the script. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, she not that good of an actress, in my opinion. Mm. I feel you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie to you, you know? Hey. <laughs> so you ain't gonna fall in love with her, but you never want to see no little girl get killed. Right, I right. Think that, that's the part, right? That's right. the thing that, that, yeah, that, that grabbed me. I was like, man. Right. They went down with it? Yeah, like for real. It's just like, like really, y'all gonna go after the kid? Like, yeah, that, not that, the little one, man. That and look, they made you hate Tariq, and he's still living. He's still man. living. And they made you hate him more. You after know that, what I'm saying? With yeah. that one. Yeah. You feel Absolutely. me? So like, like that one, that yeah. one, that one, um, that one hurt. Um, Ozark. You watch it oh, you on that? I yes, crept, sir. I crept up okay. on that, man. You know, I be having some time in the daytime, and mm-hmm. I be working, and I like to have something just in the atmosphere while right, I'm right. working. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and uh, so I got into it a little bit, and I stopped mm. after, like, episode six or seven. Mm. Oh, we sorry, man. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Look, wait. It got gay, bro. It got super gay. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, it switched yeah, up. Yeah, it got well, a little Well, I don't switch. know how... How consistent it got with the gay, but that one scene in the hotel room where the nigga got up and he was like, "You crazy or something? Because <laughs> you do this and all that. Oh, yeah. you, you be tripping." But they was like, "I was like, what's what's, what's going on right here?" Because they didn't fully show it. <laughs> yeah, and I respect them for not showing it. But I be like, "Bro, yeah. I got kids, bro. I don't want certain spirits in the atmosphere." You know what I'm saying? I feel you. So yeah, once it, I saw that, I was like, "I gotta let it go." I let I let Empire go for the same reason. Mm. Well, it got you too know. Gay. The thing is, all right, so look, we live in a different world True. now, right? Yeah. And what I've noticed is that it used to be a time where you couldn't, it wasn't on TV. Right. True. Now it's it's in everything. Like, right. I mean, right. there's no way, other way to put it. It's in everything. Right. Sometimes I think it's forced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's an agenda, in my opinion. We're going we gonna to go there today. It's an we're agenda, gonna, we're gonna go in there my today. opinion. Mm. Just because, you know, it's, that's who they are who's writing the shows. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's already become super sensitive. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You can't speak on it. I was thinking about this the other day, bro. Think about the lyrics from the 90s. Think about what Biggie say. 
Biggie say, uh, <laughs> Biggie I think he say, the push was so good, I suck on your daddy dick. Yeah. It was something along yeah. those something lines. Something along those lines, yeah. bro. Yeah. You he can't say that today. Yeah. And yeah. you think Eminem would sell a record, all the gay shit he said? Yeah. See, I, I don't think, think he'll sell a record today, bro. Mm. I think he would. Yeah, he, yeah. Uh, you think so? Yeah. Talking yeah. that reckless, bro, they would railroad him out the game, but man. see, his type of reckless was, hmm. That's interesting, though. He was very disrespectful. Very, he was very but disrespectful. that's how we grew up. We right. joked. We joked on each other like right, that, right, like right. yeah, and we we yeah. did that. You know right. what I'm saying? It wasn't offensive because we was just joking. Like we we re- I didn't really think you was gay. But I just called you that called as a that. Little, right. little joke. You know what I'm saying? But now you can't you can't do no, that. No man, you, you can't, can't go on record. You can't joke. You can't joke at all about like the I want to say it right because they're gonna come for us anyway. <laughs> um, but you can't joke on their community, right? Right. And see, here's the thing, right? For me personally, it's hard to have an opinion because every time you try to have an opinion on it, it's look like you're trying to talk back. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, we really just trying to all come to one um, understanding of each other. Right. But it's hard to do that because everybody trying to prove their side. You know what exactly. I'm saying? So exactly. That's the only thing, man. It's like, I, I, how do you have that conversation? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's all, I think it's all like, wanting understanding from both sides like, see what it is bro you just got to choose a side and stand on it it's just how you got to do you got to mm-hmm. choose a side and stand on it when it come to that either you for it or you against it you yeah. know what i'm saying we in a um, society today where it's very acceptable you know uh widespread mm. but you know depending on what you believe in you know what i'm saying and i'm a man of god you know what i'm saying so mm. like depending on what you believe in and, and, and what what word you stick to you got to choose a side mm. Mm-hmm. You know, I chose my side, and I don't go around casting nobody down. Right, right, right You know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. Because I'm flawed as well, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, and I don't think no sin is greater than the other. But at the same time, when it comes to that thing, you know, I choose a side. I choose my side, and that is what it is, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, if I run into those type, you know, those types of individuals, you know, who live their lifestyle that way, and, you know, I'm cool with them, you know, one of them uh, twist my hair up. She married, you know, to a female. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't judge her at all. You know, right, we cool. Right. You know, we run it. You know, right. and all that. You know what I'm saying? And and I drop my little nuggets. You know what I'm saying on her. You know to think about. You know what I'm saying because that's my duty as what I believe in. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I drop little nuggets on her, but I ain't gonna come at her like you need to change your lifestyle. Right, 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 right. I ain't right. gonna do that. You know. See, what I saying? think that's the important part. It's like we can have a difference of opinion. And you, you, we can have reasons for our opinions, but it's when you, it's when you say like you can't do that. Is when people completely shut exactly. down. Exactly. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? You so ain't gonna get your message across, so don't all. even try. Right. If right. you gonna do it like that way. Right. Right. That's you know not. That's not the way to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Like you <laughs> gotta be open to dialogue, and you kind of gotta be open to when you have an opinion. You gotta be open to people saying like, "Well, I don't agree with you," and being able to go back and forth and talk about exactly. it. Exactly. Have a conversation. Have a conversation. Yeah, yeah, it's all about the conversation. <laughs> yeah. It's all about the conversation. People are afraid to have a conversation now so for whatever toasting. reason. Yeah. You How diff- many years y'all been in business, man? Shit, go this ahead. right here is uh, we're at the bottom of two. Okay. Yeah, there's there'll be three in January. Yeah. Well, we toast into growth. You okay. Know what I'm saying, um, and and and, and twenty more. On a, on, a, on a higher, crazy level. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I don't know if it picked it up, but you know. We'll do it. This, this don't happen right here. Like, this, hey, this and don't I, happen. And I express moderation. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Drinking moderation responsibly. That's my moderation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And with that being said, I'm going back for a second one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to lay on that. me. I'm good. That's just me. Ugly faces. Mm-hmm. Ugly faces. They got me do some. Oh, it went on my. It went on my ID, so it didn't happen. Y'all didn't it. <laughs> it's all good. Um, this is a celebration. It's it not is. just an interview. Definitely oh, a celebration. celebration. Definitely a celebration. Everybody warm now. Yeah, that thing came. Well, that thing yeah, yeah, it came. Hit me, hit me a little late. <laughs> 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 then what? <laughs> like, oh, That's that no. chest hair <laughs> juice right there. Chest hair juice. Good Man. news to show. There you go. Yeah. We so fun. so, let me ask you a question. Go What's ahead. up, man? Um, in America. What? Okay, scratch that. What is poverty to you? Here we go. Poverty to me. First of all, it's a mindset. Mm. It's a mindset. 
Um, in my opinion, I could think of two reasons why you could be in poverty. Okay. You were born into poverty. One, that's a the lifestyle of poverty and the and the train of thought of poverty. Mm. And two, that's just your mindset that you kept. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, uh, for some reason, poverty in in America has become appealing, probably because you know um, uh, artists come out and they kind of glorify, and movies glorify um, poverty mm -hmm. to an extent. You know what I'm saying? And that's one thing I've also drew the line. I don't glorify poverty. If I, I speak glorify. on my background, <clears throat> I'm an ambitious individual from the hood. I speak to the in ambitious individuals who want better for themselves. Right. You know what I'm saying? I never glorify standing on a corner, you know what I'm saying, doing any type of, you know, type of deals or anything right, like that. Right, right. Fights in the hood. I might speak on them a fight, a couple fights I had in the hood, but it's just really telling you where I come from and look where I am now. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm never going to glorify that. I'm just speaking to the ambitious individuals. So poverty, and I spoke on this in another interview, man, it's a broken mindset, bro. A lot of individuals, I realize this as I've gotten a little older and wiser, bro. A lot of people in the predicaments they in, just because they, they, they have themselves there, they make bad decisions. We all make bad decisions. Right. Amen, amen. I ain't going to single nobody out. We all make right. bad decisions. But you got to make more right than you make wrong. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? And if you're not doing that, you have to analyze your situation, analyze where you are, and make some changes. And if you're not doing that, man, you know what I'm saying? It's, you, you, you messed up, bro. You have a poverty mindset. <laughs> you have a poverty mindset. If you okay with your surroundings and you keep on making bad decisions, you know what I'm saying? You in the hood where, you know, I had an infestation in my house. I had roaches and rats, mm. you know what I'm saying, growing up, you know. And um, if you have a mindset where you okay with living like that, then you have a poverty mindset. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I said I had infestation, bro, like, you know, roaches falling off the ceiling in my food mm -hmm. while I'm eating dinner. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, friends over, girls over. You know, I sneak a little girl in the house, you know what I'm saying? And you hear rats scratching in the walls and shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would never want to go back to that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, where I am now, the world don't know me, but I'm living my dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hey, say that again. <laughs> the world don't know me, but I'm living my dream. Mm. I'm, I moved to Atlanta from yeah. Louisiana. Mm. Y'all was talking about New Orleans earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. almost interrupted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, I almost interrupted, but I say I'm gonna wait my turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. I must be in Baton Rouge on Sunday. Oh yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Come on, man. What you got going on, man? We got a, we got a show down there on Sunday. Okay. Mm. I'm gonna be in New Performance Orleans on show. Saturday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Be New Orleans. On Come Saturday, on, man. We got to talk, after, talk this. after this. <laughs> <laughs> we got to talk after this. All I want to know is the spots to eat at. Man, man. you already know. I That's got what you. I need to know. All right. I got yeah. you. Good, good, good. Got yeah. you. All right, we good to go. We but go. um, so you know, like living in that circumstance, bro, you gotta want more for yourself. If you right. don't, you got a poverty mindset. And I'm not here to judge you on that. Mm -hmm. If that's what you want for your life, that's what you want. But, and if you like being on food stamps, I've been on food stamps, I've been on unemployment. If that's what you want to raise your family on, that's what you do. I'm not here to judge you. But don't come like, woe is me. Mm. Don't complain about your lifestyle if that's what you're choosing. If you take, if you're selling food stamps to go buy a flat screen off the street, mm. you know what I'm saying? just so you could have a flat screen and you could be saving your money, investing in something, because everybody got gifts and talents. If you're not investing in that, bro, you, you all messed up in the game, bro. You don't believe in yourself, you don't believe in the God that's in you. Mm. I got a completely different way of thinking. I'm a, I'm a man of God. I got a completely different way of thinking. Word. The world is ours. I man. asked that question because, uh, and I just, I just looked it up just to get the, definition or whatnot right and um i asked that question because i used to do these back to school drives back in the day i just did one yeah and i did it for like uh maybe four i think four years in a row mm -hmm. but i had noticed who the people that i was giving it to I, I i don't know something just stuck out to me that last time i did it it was the fact that okay 
I'm out here giving out book bags, pencil, paper, notebooks, all this type of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at the kids, and I went to the projects on purpose because right. I'm. I admit I'm trained to think that's poverty. Right. I projects. Got I got so I'm, that's yeah, the yeah. first thing I thought about. I went to all the projects in my hometown, and we did that. But I'm looking around and I'm seeing, <laughs> I'm seeing these. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing two hundred fifty dollars Jordans on right, ten year olds. Right. 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 <laughs> That's what I was just saying. I'm like, my nigga, nigga, this ain't poverty. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> when I was growing up, my my best friend, I mean, we we did shit like we had the bays and like, a, you know what a foot tub is? Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. You know, and I'm pretty sure you can attest to this. Uh, your hot water came from. Tub. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> shit, your heat came from the oven. Yeah. yeah. Like, we were struggling. But I did watch my mama and grandma you know they they work hard they and they got us up out of, out of that though yeah, 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 you absolutely. know what i'm saying but that's what i knew poverty to be right yeah now what i see today i don't know i don't i'm confused i don't know if that's poverty or not that's or, real. That's or, real. Or, or or what so that's, that's why i text you i was like does poverty still exist what in city america you from? i'm from quitman georgia We're about that small see that's what that's the difference my yeah. daddy from a small town in louisiana like that Okay. It's a different type of poverty, country poverty and city city poverty. Okay. okay. You know what I'm saying? Like uh poverty in the ghetto is different. Like poverty in the ghetto is like that poverty mindset I was talking about. Okay. That's what I come. Okay. From. You okay. know what I'm saying? Okay. Because a lot of them are there because they made bad decisions. Right. When you from the country and you in poverty, my daddy come from there. He was in shotgun houses. Oh yeah. Um, you know they was farmers. They was farming. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And they they didn't really have shoes. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a different type of different type of poverty out there. Right. That make the a country. lot of sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That because a lot they of don't sense. even have resources. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's very different out there. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's what you talking about, and that's 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 poverty as well. Right. But that's real the definition that you looked up you know that, okay. when you have little right when you in the city you know you have resources like i don't know y'all y'all may have res- uh access to the government and they help y'all out but yeah you know what i'm saying it's just different in the city because you right there like you got more going on like people giving things away okay. you know what i'm saying uh drives like you said and and things like that people doing more in the city for poverty right in the country don't nobody really even know you out there man <laughs> ain't nobody coming out there like that you know what i'm saying nobody so it's different <laughs> yeah. it's a whole different type of poverty okay that, you that, forgotten that's that, the forgotten yeah that make a lot okay. of sense like yeah. I, I grew up in Macon, like an hour away from here right and it's city but you have you have your pockets you know what i'm saying you have mm-hmm. your pockets and i struggle with that too though because jimmy when you text me that early in the week it's kind of like you want to help out you know what i mean but then you look and it's kind of like why am i helping out because like if i'm like up here like anybody around me know like if i see somebody homeless i'm quick to give money or food like that it's just in me right mm. i can't i can't see somebody homeless and not want to give them something let, let me let me go just ahead, say this ahead. when you say why why am i helping out like i I asked myself that, but mm-hmm. in, a, in a different way. I, I just asked myself how, what's a different way that I can help out that's actually gonna affect them. Gonna affect them, them. with benefit, really beneficial. Giving book bags ain't doing nothing for my people. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm from there, so I, I kinda, I know I know what the first time me leaving Quitman, coming to Atlanta or New York, mm-hmm. I know what that did for me, mentally. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I just had to change my that's direction. When you started bringing the kids that's when here. I start bringing them up yeah. here. You know what I'm saying? That's a different. That's a different thing because now they they can see it. They can touch like a book bag. At the end of the day, I can put together ten dollars and go to Walmart buy me a book bag. Right. Everybody can't come to to the big to the big city. Right. Exactly. Right. You know what I'm saying? I feel you. I yep. feel you. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I add, man, uh, that'll tell you where I come from. I come from the ghetto, but my 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 dad come from poverty and he moved into he he felt like he made it mm-hmm. when he moved into our neighborhood because it was all white and he was like late 20s early 30s and he owned a house mm. you know what i'm saying but this was in the 70s you know what i'm saying and as it went into the 80s the whites start moving out and niggas start moving in you know what i'm saying 
Can I, I can say all that. No, you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they st- I, I, I just said a lot. I ain't even real. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's too late. But look, <laughs> but look, but look, yeah, all that moved in. And right. in the 80s, me and 80s, it turned into the hood. I was born in 86. You know what I'm saying? That's when it turned into the hood. And I come from the hood, you know, and, but like I said, to my dad, he held on to that because mm-hmm. he, he, he felt like he made it. Right. He come from a shotgun house, eight brothers and sisters, you know, just mama. Daddy mm. was nowhere around, right, right. you mm. know what I'm saying? And he bought a house in the white neighborhood. Eventually it turned into the hood. And if you see it now, bro, you'll be blown away. You know what I'm saying? Man, mm. <laughs> now here's something too, cause I, like, I, can, I can feel that too, right? Like growing up, we stayed in apartments pretty much my whole like childhood right. till we turned like i turned like um maybe 12 or 13 and we moved into a house now when we moved into the house the neighborhood we was in was like my street was predominantly white right with maybe like two other black people on the on the street like my house my neighbor right here it was all you know we were black everybody else pretty much around us was white right and it's so crazy because i go home now every time i go home it just the neighborhood changes right it's like it went from man we got a nice house on the block to like now everybody moving out and they putting section eight housing <laughs> and so like and, and you know i mean i'm gonna call it is what it is like the majority of the people in the section eight housing is us <laughs> That's and i just see the houses get like ran down i mean like now it's crazy like i go home and i'm like but this ain't in the neighborhood i grew up in Mm. I'm talking about I turned the corner and so many houses boarded up <laughs> and it wasn't like that when I was growing up there was like you know everybody had a crib and it's just like to see now maybe on our street it's probably like five or six houses boarded up straight up and in my neighborhood the house ain't that? even there no more it's just a vacant lot mm. man <laughs> like once something you said though was like you know people moved out mm-hmm. when you know and you know it's, it's about to turn around though pretty soon because like now we had a time where like when white people moved out now white people were coming back they come and take the land back i'm gonna just tell you a quick little story how my hood transformed so mm-hmm. many times first of all like i said we was the first black family there and when the uh white start moving out one white moved out and a black moved in it was so funny my mama told me a story she was used to go like out the little side door of the house and holler at the neighbor they drink coffee together mm-hmm. every morning white lady talked to my mama and she was like we gonna have to move soon like the blacks are moving in and my mm. mom was like you do know i'm black right <laughs> <laughs> look because you know you get to kicking it so much they forgot they my mama was, was black yeah and she light skin like a motherfucker. right right you know what i'm saying so it was fun as hell so okay black <laughs> start moving in when I came up, it was one white boy in the neighborhood left. And that was my little dog. You know what I'm saying? We was homies. It was one white family. They moved out, and it was straight niggas. So I seen the hood go from being a little nigga, it was one OG on the block, to it being the spot where everybody was coming scope. <laughs> like, you can't come down my street because it's 50 niggas in the street shooting dice, mm. robbing the other nigga who came to see a female on the block. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like everything was going down on my block. And that's when I'm like in middle school. Mm. By the time I get to high school, late high school, I was an OG. Mm-hmm. And it, I wasn't in the streets. I was just walking around, hanging with my niggas who was in the streets. You know what I'm saying? And I was like OG age. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then little niggas start coming through who was like 14, 15, and they was wild and had our block hot. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Police coming through, raiding shit, you know, running behind these niggas, high speed chasing all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Until then I, I got, you know, early 20s, I moved out here. And then uh, recently, a couple years ago, my shit got flooded. You know, they had the Baton Rouge floods and shit. Mm-hmm. So, like, the whole block got flooded. Everybody gone. So now I'm waiting to see what's going to happen now. Like everybody rebuilding, certain people mm-hmm. rebuilding. Who coming back? Is it still going to be the hood? You know what I'm saying? You don't even know. Like like you said, white folks come and take over. Like they might come by the shit up because it was vacant lots when um when it was still a hood because houses burned down, mm-hmm. you know, all kind of stuff happened and they just leave the house to stand and then the city come uh, tear down. And you know what I'm saying? Like I seen my hood transform because, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
I've been living it all my life. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? I seen a lot of people rent. People, a lot of people come and go. We like, one of the few that own. It's probably like three, four. And I got a song that man, y'all got to hear that shit. You know what I'm saying? Called Help. You know what I'm saying? That that just tell the story. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like what you see when you walk out the house. Manicure yards, luxury cars. Is your right neighbor lieutenant, left neighbor the sarge? Are your <laughs> kids heard growing up was aimed for the stars? Or uh, is it different living conditions? It ain't a house on my block that ain't got a conviction. Where the mm. kids hear they mama say she wish she never had me and you ain't never gonna be shit like your daddy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like every house on my block, nigga, convicted felons in it. Right. That's that's my reality. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then and, and they move out and they, you know what I'm saying? The house vacant, they might tear the bitch down. Like, the block was hot. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, Man. I seen the hood transform many times. Right. You know, and then I just wanted to let y'all know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, then, it's crazy. Like I yeah, say, being out that. here. What did, I, that, what did that do for you? Like, being coming here, out here? Yeah. Take me to a whole nother level in life. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um,. The thing is, bro, like I always had ambition, I always had drive. Right. So I hit the streets in Baton Rouge and just like made it my backyard. Whatever I wanted to do, I did it. Hmm. Like I put my CDs all over the city. That's why I'm still running out there. I'm still on the radio out there. You know, everybody that's somebody, you know what I'm saying? They know who I am, they respect what I do. You know what I'm saying? But I felt like as far as the type of rap that I do, bro, I'm a spitter. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. I felt like I wasn't getting my proper due out there. You know what I'm saying? As far as, like, I got respect, but you, of course, I want the world. Right, I don't right, just right. want respect. You know what I'm saying? Like, respect is good. You know, I got to have my, I demand my respect mm -hmm. for my art, you know, and as a man. But as far as my art, bro, like, this is what I live for. So I want the world. And, you know, I say, look, I was visiting Atlanta. Atlanta was showing love. The ladies was showing love. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and it's the music capital for their rap. You right. know what I'm saying? So I say, Let, man, let's, let's get out here. I want to see if I could come up in another city the way I did. I, I want to see if I can make another city my backyard. Mm. So I say, let me come out here. And you know, I built it from the ground up. And, and like, I made a life for myself. I got a family. Never imagined I would be a family man. Mm. I'm a family man now. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, I got a business. I got my own business aside from rap. You know what I'm saying? And the rap shit doing well. Very well, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, this is my second time around here. You know what I'm saying? I'm right. grateful to be here. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm just connecting a lot of dots, you know what I'm saying, with a lot of different people. So, you know, um, it's a beautiful thing, and I'm in a beautiful house, bro. Like, like I say in one of my songs, my bedroom about as big as my old house. Mm -hmm. You know, my bedroom about the size of my old house. You mm -hmm. feel me? And I, and I walk through my house now, and I'm like, and it ain't no mansion. Far from a mansion. Mm -hmm. yeah, that bitch two story. That bitch lovely, but that bitch. You know what I'm saying? For it to be what it is, bro. Like, I feel like I'm living a from. dream. Yeah, right. it's way more than I come from. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm like, I'm blown away by what God did. You know, just by being out here in Atlanta, taking a chance. And I Take put a chance. video up on my Instagram the other day. Like, so like, if you're thinking about doing it, if God put it on your heart, take that chance. Just do it. Because I'm a living testimony that it works. If you put your mind to it 1,000%, it will work. And it worked for me. And it's, I'm just an ordinary nigga from the hood. <laughs> right, right, right. Jay Good. <laughs> you know I'm pretty honest. Go ahead. When it, especially when it comes to myself. And just listening at, at his story, what he's talking about, it made me realize how unintentionally ungrateful I am. Mm. <laughs> break you know that down. True, that's real. <laughs> it, it really ain't much to break down, it's just the fact of, you could just see it in his whole aura. Right, yeah, yeah, This yeah. man grateful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the little for, I have. And it's what, a lot though. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. You, like you said, the world don't know you, but you you literally, I can, I, I, the statement just hit me. Yeah. I can see it now. Yeah. You living mm -hmm. your dream. Like That's revelation. Yeah. Man, that, that's, that's what that's called. That's, that's revelation. That's what God will do. Like, He'll send somebody like me to come tell my story, and it prophesy to you. Mm. It'll speak to you. It'll say like, "Look, damn, I got this going on in my life. I got that. Look where I came from. You right. came from the country, country right. pop. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Look where you at. You in Atlanta? Got your own show, standing. Show. Right. You know what I'm saying? You ain't did a couple episodes and it's gone. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. You years in the game. I started my business in 2009. 
I was working at Walgreens. My niggas used to joke at me, you mm. know what I'm saying? Because I was on the radio in Baton Rouge at the time and everything. My niggas used to joke on me and everything. Like, look at this nigga, shirt and tie, retail mm. nigga. You mm. know what I'm saying? On the radio, you supposed to be a rapper. Right. You feel me? And I started my business in 2009, and I did it because a lot of rappers out there had niggas behind them, mm. endorsing them, putting mm. money behind them, and nobody was putting money behind me. Right. right. And I was like, nigga, I know I'm colder than all these niggas. Right. All these niggas. Nobody endorsing me. I'll say I'm gonna endorse myself. Mm. I'm gonna start a business. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't even gonna let niggas know it's, it's me. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. just a business. Word. Right. I'm gonna promote right. it. You know what I'm saying? Get it out there. I was walking around Wild Greens like, okay, they got goddamn pharmacy back here. That shit make 40000 a day. Mm -hmm. mm. You feel me? Photo department make five Gs a day. Right. Cosmetics over there make two Gs a day. The front end, front register make 10 Gs a day. Mm -hmm. How can I put some shit together like this, man? Right. You know what I'm saying? Everything ain't working. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I said, let me, let me put some shit together. I was working overnight. Obviously, I had a lot of time on my hands. Right. I right. was just thinking, let right. me put some shit together. I started my business, man. Look, that was in 2009. In 2016, some paper really started coming in. Mm -hmm. I was making a little money. Yeah. I was making little wins, $100, $200 a day. Mm -hmm. But see, 2016, nigga, I had to go through the mud, though. I had to go through the struggle. Right. Bill Collectors was calling. <laughs> right. You feel me? Sally Mae was calling. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the car company was calling. Mm -hmm. Everybody was calling. Rent, you know what I'm saying, was knocking at the door. Mm. All that, you know what I'm saying? And, and I said, bro, like, I'm going to stick it out. And I was a job, nigga. Mm. Since I was 14, I worked a job, punching a clock. Mm. Check coming every two weeks. You feel me? All right. So you know, stepping out on my own business. I stepped out on my own business solely in 2014. 14. 2016, that money started coming. Mm. God started blessing. And look, <laughs> it ain't no coincidence I got close to God. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. when I left that job and had to leave that check coming there in two weeks, right. I got to rely on something. It ain't man. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't no man. Feel you feel me? Yeah. So, you know, I say it got to be a higher power to, to, to come bless me. And look, when you, you step out on faith and, and say, God, come bless me, you say it in your word that you got gifts in heaven waiting on me. I just got to claim. That's what I was saying every day. You know what I'm saying? Right. He say, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> he say, here you go. He start blessing me, bro, and I'm mm. still here. And I ain't punched no clock since then. Mm. Eating. My, um, Making more than I did at Walgreens. Way more. My mom is tuning in right now, right? So Straight she left up. a message on, on, on the Facebook. She said, uh, I believe our new generation of young adults don't have the same values as children growing up before 1993. Mm. Those kids most don't learn how to love one another, love God, and don't know how to love their parents. But it comes down to what and how they're being taught, mainly how they value life. Right. Shout out to my mom for tuning in. Man. Word. Really? Shout out, mom. Shout uh, out yeah, moms. Yeah, yeah. Mom, mom tuning in, man. She down there in the Mac town. I don't know if she heard that story about the neighborhood. We're going to have to get y'all up out of that, though. But we're going to keep the house, though. We ain't selling the house. So Mama, I'm going to put you in that mansion put you was meant for. We working, man. They were just up here yesterday, man, work, uh, helping some stuff out. So uh, shout out to the parents, man. Love Straight up. Yeah. yeah, love that. Definitely, definitely. Um, man, what, it was something else, though. It was something else that we said. I forgot. Through text? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought about it, but I was like, I'm going to have to – Look through the phone. I'm about to shut the phone out. I know, cause I, it was something in the text message. I can't. Remember. I I I'll do it. Let's yeah. get it. Let me see. Another topic. That's real though, man. We so, running it though. Oh yeah, no, no, no. It's all. It's all. Well, good. while he doing that, man, let me talk a little bit about the single. Yeah. Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Winning. Winning. As, winning. It, as it should be winning. <laughs> I was listening to that on the way here. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So that's the single right now, winning. And uh, and I really feel like, man, look, God say we all ministers. Mm. You feel me? And that's my ministry right there. Music is my ministry. And when I go around performing, I'm preaching. Mm -hmm. And look, when I'm speaking winning, I ain't just rapping that I'm winning. You feel me? I'm speaking that over everybody's life. I just did that back to school badge. Like I told you, I did a back to school badge. And I called all the kids to the front and I say, look, I want all the, 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 the prospective honor roll students to come up here. 
You know what I'm saying? Like everybody that plan to be on the, on the road this year, come up here to the front of the stage. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and I say I want to touch and agree with you. You know what I'm saying? Like I want you to have a winning school year. All the business owners that's in the in the building. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that's trying to do anything, if you're trying to get a promotion on your job. You feel me? Winning. I'm speaking this over everybody. So everywhere I go, bro, I'm just trying to speak winning over your life. You know what right. I'm saying? So that's what the, the campaign is with my um my uh single, man. Um I do little videos talking about little ways to win, all that, you know, and like it's little nuggets in the songs, so just listen to it. Word. No, I, I listen to winning on the way over here, but I ain't gonna lie to you though. I'm gonna tell you what caught me. It <laughs> went winning. It was the other joint you sent me. Ghetto baby. Ghetto baby. <laughs> Man. Hey, that's crazy, bro. Because ghetto baby. Had, hey, I was riding that ghetto baby for every. Long. A lot of people say that. Yeah. A lot of people rock with that ghetto baby. Yeah, yeah. You know, and um, and I gotta explain why I went with winning first. Okay. Just because what I said, pretty much. I'm gonna speak it. I'm gonna speak that on everybody. Life. Everybody wanna be winning. Whether you from the ghetto, whether you from the um the uh, suburbs or mm -hmm. wherever you from, you want to win. You want to keep winning. You know what I'm saying? And uh, everybody not a ghetto baby. That's right. what I am. You know what I'm saying? So once they connect with the concept of winning, then they going to rock with the, you know, they like what I do. Mm -hmm. I, I drop some nuggets on them. Okay, this, this dude know what he doing. Then they rock with the ghetto baby. You know right, what I'm right. saying? So that's why I went with it. I know a lot of people do right to get old baby, like to get old baby. You know what I'm saying? And, and and look, I got another one called Help Me, and that bitch is solid. I got some shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, you spin, you spin, and, and, and it's the um, it's I mean, you know, for us, we all from the south. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like for me, I love when I can find spitters from the love. south because yeah. they, and when I say they, I'm talking about the majority of people in hip hop think that you know it's still in the back of their head that people from the south can't really rap. They expect us to come and do some. You know, little catchy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's ways to do all of that and still have something to say. Right. And so I, I can appreciate it because I heard I heard both of them records and I was like, okay, yeah, you got you definitely got something. You're talking about something. Right. That's the thing. Like you, everything we've been talking about now, you really said in both of those records too. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. you really told that story in those records, so I can hear hear it in the music, man. Um, you found the. Um, I did. I think I, you you seen what I just did, then I don't even know if you <laughs> caught that. You know what I'm saying? Like, come come with it. Come I with did. It. Um, so I think I sent you a text. I was just basically saying, where are all of our Dr. Dre's, mm. Kendrick, Jay Z's, mm. J Cole's down here For in real? the South? For real? Like, who gonna pass the torch in the South? Yeah. Who, who 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 carrying the torch? Who carrying the torch? I who carrying the torch? Who, who to, carrying the who torch? Who carrying the torch? <laughs> so we got J Cole, and that pretty much came through. Even though J Cole from North Carolina, which is really the South. Yeah, we all associate him with Jay Z and East Coast. Like, if we want to okay. just really go there, but it's like, who down south really standing on their own too? Saying on this one, okay. We came up with a couple. Now I want to know your take though. Before okay, we go over those names. I gotta give props to Boosie. Mm -hmm. I'm from Baton Rouge. I gotta give props to Gates. And young boy, he talk about some shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Be a young boy. Shout out. Like, we got some shit in Baton Rouge. Mm. We got some shit in Baton Rouge. And we ain't just making no useless catchy shit. Man. Now, Gate, they jump all over the place. You know what I'm saying? But he'll drop some shit that be like, damn. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He'll drop it every now and then. You know what I'm saying? But I do, I do resonate with who he is. Mm. One thing I got to say about that we don't, as men, don't recognize a lot of a lot of lot of niggas are um what's the word not schizophrenic but um when your mind just be all over the place ADD ADD mm -hmm. a lot of niggas are ADD you know what I'm saying and you know the nigga the nigga suffers he said he suffers from depression mm -hmm. so he be tripping mm -hmm. he be tripping. You know what I'm saying? But he got some shit in him. You know what I'm saying? He dropped some nuggets there down there. Now, I don't agree with everything that he do. He fucks up. But, and he say some crazy shit, off the wall shit. But 
he got some shit in him. Same with Boosie. Boosie be fucking up. You know what I'm saying? But he say some shit that'll touch your soul. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And we don't, we don't deal with the fact that niggas suffer from conditions. We just think niggas be tripping. Hmm. Like, I don't rock with that nigga because he be tripping. Right. But niggas suffer from conditions. Right. Like, diagnosed conditions. Hmm. Like, if you went, like, we don't go to the doctor like that. Right. But if we went to the doctor, we could be diagnosed for some shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I would like to say myself, I like to look at myself as stable on a lot of fronts. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, I'm a family man. You know what I'm saying? And when I say that, I take care of home as well as this music, as well as my entrepreneurship. Hmm. Like, I, 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 I cover all fronts. But that's an honorable feat. Like, everybody don't do that. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't trying to uh, big up myself, but that's a hard thing to do because it gets very stressful for me. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It gets very tough on me. I was just talking to my dog. Like, it's rough. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I can't fault somebody if they not doing that. But as far as the music thing goes, it's people that's doing it. They may not get they just do. I, I listen to Louisiana music because that's my home. That's where you're from, right? That's right. Where, I'm, where I'm from. Now, all these other guys out here, I don't know exactly what they're doing. There's a lot of rappers in Atlanta. There's so many names that I can't listen to all of them. No, oh, right. yeah, yeah. So I don't even know right. what they're doing out here. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's some good rappers. It's a hip-hop scene out here, which I was in when I first moved out here. You know, I, you, know you come out here, you got to see what's what. So I was rocking with the, the powers that be. And there's some guys that's spitting mm -hmm. out here. You feel me? I still feel like I'm the sickest everywhere that I go. <laughs> <laughs> As you should. <laughs> you gotta be I still that. feel like I'm the sickest everywhere I go. But there's some guys spitting out here, and I and I give props where they do. For sure. Um, for y'all that's watching, man, y'all chime in. Let us know on um, social media who y'all think holding the torch for the South right now. Like, I know we said pretty much the first name that came to my thing was Change, Two Chains. He kind of holding it down for for the South right now. Yeah. Um, Outside of that, who else, who else was it? I think we was talking to... Y'all heard that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Y'all heard that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Big boy, yeah. See, for me, okay, okay. That man, yeah. hard, though. No, yeah. the album is definitely tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, we try to be unbiased because we outcast fans. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, to, we, to, we, to we, 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 we said that last <laughs> yeah. time. We <laughs> be okay. Right, okay. Yeah. So we, we try, try not to, but I will say this. That boy, big boy, still rapping at, 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 a, high yeah. he at a high level. Yeah, he was at a high level. I was shocked. Yeah, I didn't at know he still had level. it like that. Oh man, he had a high level. He, he impressed me to because when he was rapping with Outkast, I was just focused on Andre. Yeah. Right. yeah, but when he stood on his own, and I liked um, what's the double album they had? He uh, had Love Box. Below Speaker Box. Box. I yeah. like Speaker Box. Yeah, and I might like this more. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, this yeah, I for think. Sure. Personally, I think this is the best solo. Solo, album for, sure. Yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By, by a long shot. Yeah, by a long shot. I think Dude, so. spitting. He and Killer rock. Mike slaughtered it. Oh, man. And I like Killer Mike, but I didn't know he was spitting like that. Killer Mike, that boy. <laughs> yeah. He definitely he is. Really Killer Mike been that boy, but he that boy for real. That nigga no, killed Killer Mike, like, bro. Yeah. He like, I ain't just no activist. No. Like, I'm nah. still spitting. And see, that's the thing, you know, like now. Because Killer Mike is known for the, like the social activism and like being a part of Run the Jewels, mm. people kind of forget. Because mm -hmm. if like Run the Jewels, I I love what it. I'm, well, I mean, Paid in America. When you see Paid in America, our group Paid in America. That's that's who we looked at. We looked at Run the Jewels and what they were doing, right? Mm. But when you see Run the Jewels, they're a two man group, and so no matter what, some kind of get it gets taken away from Killer Mike a little bit. Mm. And when Killer Mike get on that mic. He do what his name say. He killed the mic. Kill the mic. He killed the mic. <laughs> why, 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 why though? Like, why? And that's probably part of the reason why I texted you that other night. Because it's like, why are we forgetting this? Them two, it ain't, them, them it ain't two. Commercial. But them two name, true. That's what it is. True. That's commercial. It. We're not hearing it every day. Yeah. Like, you got to go and. It ain't and, shoving it yeah. in your face. They ain't you got to seek in your out face. Run the Jewels. Yeah. You got to seek out Big Boy. Even though Big Boy. Because I don't even know who in it. I just know Killer Mike. That's what I'm saying. I heard Kill, the name. Kill and I just know Killer Mike. Producer, rapper, you know what I'm saying, but Jay still active for sure. Absolutely. Doctor Dre active, but on the low. Mm -hmm. So he ain't out there every day either. But you go to that West Coast and say Doctor Dre. Hmm. Oh yeah, it's straight respect. Weight. You know what I'm saying? Weight. That's so I'm trying to get to that. Like, where is that over here? Like, but if we gonna say on that staple, caliber, yeah, 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 up there. I think honestly, hmm. I think the last person to have that. Was Wayne. Wayne. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say baby. 
but he messed up his whole respect. Oh yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, he messed up his whole respect. How do you feel about that being somebody from Louisiana? Yeah. I know Baton Rouge and New Orleans two different places. It's one of them things where, well, the thing is, for a long time, all we had was New Orleans. Mm. The Baton Rouge scene came late '90s, mid to late '90s, early 2000s. That's what Boots and Webby. Yeah. yeah, Boots and Webby, but it was a couple guys. MC Nero, guys, mm. shout out MC Nero, C Lo, who introduced Boosie. Mm. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a rich rich music history out there. Mm -hmm. And I had the privilege of being, coming up in that age right. to know it all. You know what I'm saying? Like when the whole Jigga City movement came, I don't know if y'all know about the Jigga mm, City movement, no. but it, it, it was crazy. Just like the whole Snap thing in Atlanta. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what, what, what was it? Uh, like Franchise Boys and, right, and, right. and, 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 and uh, D4L, mm -hmm. all them, when that shit was crazy, we had a movement like that called Jigga City. And we felt slighted because we felt like that was derived from us. Mm. You know what I'm saying? All that dancing shit, you know what I'm saying? It looked like our shit. Like Jock was doing that motorcycle yeah. shit. We had that shit about two years before that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we felt played. But um, it was crazy, bro. I was, I, was, I was high school coming up and it was just insane bro you know what i'm saying when 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 wipe me down came that was late in the game you know what i'm okay, saying i got you that's mm -hmm. when i was old enough to be traveling out here to atlanta and i went to central station and they played it in there we went crazy mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we went crazy you feel me right we went crazy we heard wipe me down in there because we were still shocked that they know us yeah mm -hmm. they know Boosie. yeah right, right, <laughs> you know what right. I'm saying? it was crazy because Boosie had been popping since like 97 but we had a music scene, you know what I'm saying? And um, what the fuck was I talking about? Just the um, I don't even remember. That was the, I mean you 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 answered it though. Yeah, mm -hmm. this the, the scene in the city. Oh yeah, it's, like, it, it was it was it was crazy, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's been it's it's been a long time. It's been mm -hmm. a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, mid '90s, late '90s is 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 when the rapping started introduced we had our own scene and it's been and it's still crazy because it's gone to another level because like they they going nation now since boosie and webby opened the door you know what i'm saying you had gates you got a uh, young boy you know what i'm saying you got people that's coming through now right right you know what i'm saying to a national level you get hiding bad rules you could really go somewhere mm. you know what i'm saying and we still don't get the respect dude but you know um oh i know we was talking about how did y'all feel about baby that's what oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm biased. Yeah, I don't like how he, he's being portrayed. Mm. I don't like how he's being portrayed. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, he messing over one of our own, one of the ones who, you know, uh, if he wouldn't have came through, wouldn't nobody know us. Wayne mm. is the biggest thing out in Louisiana ever. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if you fucking over Wayne, you fucking over all us. Like when the when the Saints won the Super Bowl, we felt like we all won. Right. Mm. right. So when we lose, we all lose. You can't do that. You know what I'm saying? And um, we real tied in with Texas. Like, if you go to Houston, if a Louisiana nigga moved to Houston, you didn't move. You didn't move. Mm. <laughs> because mm. everybody's there. Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You go to the, the Galleria, you're going to see everybody from Louisiana. So, P looked up to um, J. Prince. Mm -hmm. Rap a lot, yeah. Rap a lot. You know what I'm saying? So, they felt slighted by what he doing, by what Baby doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, like, just like at a time, Baton Rouge looked up to New Orleans, New Orleans looked up to Houston, you know, with, with, with Jay Prince. You know what I'm saying? So, like, what he's doing, bro, is, 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 is just unethical. Like, you know, and Pete didn't do that. Pete, Pete, next to Wayne, you know what I'm saying? Pete is that shit. Mm. Yeah, P, P held the torch, man. And he I pa think he passed the torch. If we go point for point, P is more accomplished than Wayne, in my opinion. Oh no, man, yeah, yeah that's <laughs> yeah, that's that's. that's yeah, we get yeah. that. That's there's no we, argument. Nigga <laughs> did NBA. <laughs> nigga did wrestling. Bro, we forget about. <laughs> no, okay, you know something. Forget all that. P had cell phones. Cell phones. I forgot about that. Like back, like nigga had toys. Like <laughs> back, like back in the day when it was like had action some, figures. He had cell phones, bro. Like the burner phones. He was the first person on that. I remember that. He sold gas, man. 
Dog, Pete. Pete had yeah. gas stations, dog. Damn. I remember this. I ain't even know that. I know Baby had a gas, uh, a oil, 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 oil company. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what he doing, bro, like, and you ain't even got to do it, bro, because you paid. Mm. You feel me? And uh, he the last thing that's that thing out of Louisiana. So niggas going back and, and rocking with him. Like, niggas that we respect, like Juvenile, mm -hmm. like Mystical. You know what I'm saying? Like, you going back and rocking with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's well known what he done. You left him because he done that. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it hurt my spirit because I'm a Louisiana guy. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was raised off that no limit cash money shit when cash money was real family. Mm -hmm. It made me want to rap. Right. Yeah. I didn't want to rap. Like, I was with my niggas in eighth grade. We was freestyling because we wanted to be hot boys. <laughs> yeah, right, we wanted right. to be hot boys. We wore tees, bows, and reeds. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, we was in school freestyling exactly like them. You know, because we thought it was family. We thought it was love. Mm. And when we realized it wasn't that, nigga, we was crushed like, right. like when your uncle and your nephew fight mm. or some shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like when your family fight. Yeah. That's the way we was hurt when this shit started coming out. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when niggas go back because of money, because you know, you know what I'm saying? Whatever your situation is, y'all know you got family, you older, mm -hmm. you got family, you gotta make decisions. You know what I'm saying? But when you go back and rock with some shit that totally disrespected all your everything y'all was built on, come on man. It hurts. Right. Stand right. on your own. That's what Turk, I gotta give props to Turk. Turk yeah. stand on his own too. He yeah. rock with baby. He dap him up when he see him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But Turk got his TNT empire. A <laughs> right. YNT, my YNT. bad. Young and thugging empire. Yeah. It may, like I say, the world may not know it. Right. But that nigga living in, he got his own company. He performing. You know what I'm saying? See, that's the thing, man. It's like it's the it's it's real. It's reality oh versus public perception, right? Mm -hmm. And like, with the reality is, you can be a rapper. You can be an artist. You can go out here. You can you can perform different places. You can sell your merch. You can live. Straight up. The public perception thing that you got to be on TV. On you got to be on the radio all day. Exactly. To make to say you made it. And that ain't the case. But you can eat on that underground. Hey, Currency man. is a living testimony. Boy, I will, boy. <laughs> that's what you about to say? Nigga, I was just about to bring because that's the. That's the face card of That's the epitome. <laughs> hey, Jet Life Prospect, Cardo got wings out right now. Yeah, and man, you know what I'm saying? And your boy on the West Coast. Yeah. What Nipsey. Nipsey. Nipsey Hustle. Nipsey. Yeah. He doing it. The boy doing it. That's what it's about, man. Like, find your niche and fill it. Don't yeah. worry about what everybody else is doing, lane. man. Run, run your, your, run in your, your own, own lane. Yeah. Don't sell your soul to be in front of everybody's face all day, every day. Hey, man, that's it. That's definitely it. I think that's the perfect. That's the perfect place to put, you know, put a button on this whole conversation. Man, I tell you what, tell the people the floor is yours. What is you want to tell the people before we get out of here today? Man? Hey, man, dig deep. Follow God. If you align with God every day, he going to clear your pathways and make it easy for you. You know what I'm saying? If you find the complications, closed doors, just dig deep and see, be like, OK, is this what God got for me? Talk to God every day. Don't just talk to God. Hear from God. Listen, don't do all the talking. Listen sometimes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because he talking, but is you listening? That's the question you got to ask yourself. Follow his will, and I promise you, you're going to reach your full potential. You got to reach your full. You got to want it first. You know what I'm saying? Dig deep, reach your full potential. And look, you're going to live your dream. The thing is, live your dream. Find out what your purpose is. Everybody got purpose. Everybody got purpose. What is your purpose? Live it. You can live. Hey, the prayer that God say, pray, say, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Do you know what that means? The kingdom is heaven. Thy kingdom come mean heaven on earth. So what you want in heaven, let it be done in me on earth. You feel me? I don't talk this just because like no preacher talking no shit. No. If I did that, I wouldn't be cursing. I wouldn't be drinking. I'm not no preacher with no dang on dang around my neck and all that. No preach, none of that, man. Look, I'm speaking that real because it's real life for me. You feel me? Thy kingdom come. 
heaven on earth for me what you want for me what is your purpose miracles and wonders miracles you know what a miracle is that's something that everybody ain't do it you know what i'm saying eyes haven't seen ears haven't heard minds haven't even thought of what god got for you do that find out what it is do that bring it in earth bring it in earth you feel me j cole was an ordinary dude from the city from fucking Fayetteville. what is that hmm. you feel me jay-z was from fucking marcy projects man hmm. this nigga was a drug dealer you feel me who was that nigga you feel me kendrick lamar hmm. this nigga was a lame nigga this nigga <laughs> still lame oh, man. but the whole man. world know this nigga he's spitting man you feel me come on man the difference is they recognize who they were let's go to the females jill scott mm. nigga heard of jill scott mm -hmm. come on man she would be considered overweight she would be considered unattractive india Ire would be considered unattractive she recognized who she was man and she said look let's do this in the earth thy kingdom come you know what i'm saying let's live this I ain't gotta be no ordinary girl from the hood. I ain't ugly. I'm Indy Ire. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now the whole world know who she is. Come on, man. Find out who you is. Live that. Like my dog right here. Appreciate what you got. God blessed you. Mm -hmm. God gave you something to build up on. Build up on that. Is the cup half empty or the cup half full? Which one is it, man? If you're looking at it as it half empty, bro, you negative, man. Don't come on, man. And I'm not judging nobody. I ain't preaching to nobody. It's just a life change. Make a life change, and you can have more. These was ordinary people, ordinary people, but they recognize I got something in me. Mm. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm living. We winning. We winning. Win out, you. Appreciate y'all having me. Appreciate you. Hey, man. That's perfect. Appreciate you. I feel you. like we got to have us like a little tagline to end the show. <laughs> you feel me? We're about to find so one. We, what we going to, what we going to, I'm just going to say what I wrote up here on this thing. Go ahead. Hey, man. Good Hennessy show. Where real life meets hip hop. No buffer. Just facts. Just See facts. See y'all next week. Word. Hey. <laughs> <laughs>